Sometimes the Prophet ﷺ would miss Salatul Layl altogether, as the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. But the Prophet ﷺ would make it up during the time of Duha with 12 rak'ah. He would add a rak'ah to the 11 because you cannot make two wit in a day or in a night. So even sometimes the Prophet ﷺ would miss the night prayer. So this is something that we should not make uh, the Muslim have a setback 
that I'm, uh, I'm no good, there's no way for me to be uh, among those people that are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so the shaitan would come to him to leave it all together. No, we have to deal with our own weaknesses. And uh, the hadith of Hamdala radiallahu anhu, which uh, probably all of us heard it before, when uh, he said, Nafaqa Hamdala, when Hamdala radiallahu anhu, he thought that he had done an act of hypocrisy. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu saw him and he asked him, what's the matter? He said, when I'm with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yuhadithuna anil jannati wal nar. He talks to us about jannah and the hellfire, as if we see it العين, as if we see it with our own eyes and then we go back to the family and the children عفسنا, الأولاد, الزوجات, and so on that we play with the children and play with the wives and so on and we forget <coughs> so he thought that since he is not in the same level of feelings that he has with the Prophet وسلم, that when he goes home and play with you know the children you know do crazy things sometimes with their parents and the parents become you know, if somebody sees them, they are respected among others in the masjid and so on, but they, they act uh, silly, right? Which is uh, fine when a person is with his children. And they, uh, what Khazar Ali said, that he has the same thing, right? And they said, let's go as the Prophet and this is how they always do. They always ask the Prophet and that's Abu Bakr, the best of the Ummah, the Prophet he has the same thing. So when they went to the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ told them that uh, one hour like this and one hour like this. Right? And if you are in the same level or the same way that you are with me, the angels would shake your hands on the, on the street, on the road. That means there's no need then for a test and the unseen. Everything becomes, it's over. We're dealing with human nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in such a way that if you try to break this, you'll break yourself. If a person tries to be like what we hear in the ayat about the angels, then he will break himself. He, you can't. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. So there's part in our life that has to be being silly or playing, right? Being, uh, you know, things that is done which is permissible as long as it's not haram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us so much spaciousness in what is halal. So, uh, but to look down at this, and this is what led other nations to extremism. Like, for example, in the Christian world, those who, they look down at the relationship between a man and a woman. They said that this is something filthy. So some of them chose to be away from all of this. Going against the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, it does not do anything good for them, it do evil. Uh, and the other extreme, those who when they saw this, this religion is too difficult for us, they run away from it. In the deen of Islam, uh, everything is whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in us, created us with some desire, there's a way to fulfill this desire. But in the halal way, in the proper way. And if at certain times, certain places, where it's difficult, not because of the religion, but because of the life of the people, and they made it difficult for themselves, then the person has to choose to be patient. This is where as if he's holding tight on a hot coal and everything. Yes, but this is not because of the religion is difficult, it's that people made it difficult for one another. So again, we have to realize this as one of the ulama. He said that this is, uh, you would find hadith in this, there's no religion, there's no way of life like religious uh, thing. You would find it part of the deen is to exercise, is to play sports. This is only in the deen of Islam, right? It's part of the deen to exercise in the halal way, of course, right? And the hadith of this, the Prophet ﷺ ordering the people to do certain things. And when they complained to the Prophet ﷺ, as the hadith in Musa and Ahmad, that they were tired and so on, he ordered them to walk, right? So there is things to be done physically, it's part of the deen. Now if you see, uh, if people do this and they are religious, they, you know, how can a religious person uh, do exercise or play sports or whatever it is. People think that if you're a religious person, that means you're living in some cave. This is not true, right? But the balance is there without going to one extreme or the other, without having the arrogance and the cave, right? When people, for example, play sports to look down at others, this is not permissible. Or to attract, for example, others in a haram way, this is not permissible. 
But to be things to be done in the halal way, seeking the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right way, definitely this is part of the deen of Allah. So we have to look at the matter like this. And these people, they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at night and they would sleep and they would work and seek provisions from Allah and they would have moments in which they would, uh, you know, relax and joke in the halal way and so on. So let's, uh, this is important to know before we get into these examples so that we put things in perspective. <coughs> uh, some examples, not in a particular order, uh, the Prophet والسلام, when he one, entered one time the masjid, this hadith of uh, Anas radiallahu anhu in Bukhari and Muslim, فَإِذَا حَبْلٌ مَمْدُودٌ بَيْنَ السَّارِيَتَيْنِ Prophet ﷺ found uh, a rope extended between the two poles in the masjid. So the Prophet ﷺ said, ما هذا? What is this? Uh, they said, هَذَا حَبْلٌ لِزَيْنَبْ تَطْرُدْ عَنْ نَفْسِهَا النُّعَاسِ This is a rope for Zainab, the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. She pushes away a nuas or sleepiness with this rope when she's standing in salat. And if she's sleepy, she would lean uh, onto this rope to keep her awake in her salat. First of all, this is shows how the sign of determination these people had, right? And this is a very difficult thing to be done, but it shows how sincere and pure and dedicated they were in matters of the deen. The Prophet ﷺ said, Hullu. Loosen it, take it off, take it away. Then the Prophet ordered, one of you should pray, which means when he's active, right? When he is there, when he has the energy. If he is, uh, if he felt that he is uh, bored or tired, then sleep. The matter is easy. Don't force yourself, don't make it difficult for yourself, right? But if the whole night a person is, is bored and tired, that's a problem, right? So he said, you should pray, but you pray when you have the time, when you're, uh, you have energy, you have the means. So a person has to organize this time, of course, and by following the way the Prophet ﷺ, a person sleeps early, uh, get up at night and, and, and make salah, or before Fajr, right? He finds himself, he has the energy to do it. But once he starts falling asleep, he should not fight with himself, and struggle with himself, no, I have to finish the hour and so on. Otherwise, as one of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he said that a person would want to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for himself, he end up making dua against himself. He should not blame no one but his own self then. Because he's sleepy, he doesn't know what he's saying. Right? So a person then has to leave the salah then, meaning finish it quickly if a person is in a long salah, and sleep. The matter is easy. But the point is to have a consistency in it. So that when we hear about these things and the evidences and the actions, we should not say it's either or. Either I pray five hours at night or I'm not doing the right job, so I'm just going to not do it. No, as we said, either a person would say, he said, 11 rak'ah that he would pray at night. Each rak'ah he would pray with, you know, Allah ahad, one ayah, anything, right? And he can divide it four after Isha, four before Fajr. Or he can even pray two rak'ah or four rak'ah, anytime, anything. But as long as he would make salah. Once he feels like he wants to do more, then leave yourself. Do more. Don't stop yourself. But as long as the consistency is there. Sometimes he do long, sometimes he's, it's short. But he would always do it. And even when a person feels tired or bored or whatever, at least he can do two rak'ah, four rak'ah. It's, it's nothing, even if it's short rak'ah. But not to uh, stop this great deed. So that a person is among those who pray at night. Not those who do things once in a while. As the Prophet ﷺ said to Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhu, ya Abdullah, la takul mithla fulan, kana kumun al-layl, thumma taraka qiyam al-layl. Wa Abdullah, do not be like so and so. He used to pray at night and then he left it. Right? This is not a good thing. This is not a good sign. And many of those who are present, for example, they used to pray the night prayer of Ramadan. Many people, they, they do that, but then what happened after Ramadan? Maybe in Shawal, right? But then after that, things goes away. So do not be like the, these people, right? We need to be doing something every day. Doesn't matter how busy we are. Doesn't matter what our work schedule is. Busy, uh, having free time or whatever, a person can spare 15 minutes, right? 10 minutes. And if he has the means, then he can make it an hour and two hours. But this, as long as the matter is consistently done, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless. And as we said, the key to this is 
وَدُخُلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْبَابَ فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمُوهُ فَإِنَّهُ غَالِبُ Just enter the door. And if you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you victory. And we're ordered just to take the means. And one, whatever we are capable of, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless it for us. But to stay away, to say this is too difficult, and always just live wishfully thinking that a person will do something one day, uh, then it never ends. The same thing with Qur'an. person hears about the Sahaba radiallahu anhu finishing the Qur'an every seven days, he says, that's it, that's what I'm going to do. Right? So he starts doing that, he can't do it. So he leaves the recitation altogether. Or he recites, he gets excited one day, and he tries to do it, and he recites one-seventh of the Qur'an in one day. Right? And then the next day, he's busy, he can't do it. So he does not read anything. Then the third, second day, the third day, and so on. Then he gets excited again, and he recites something, and then he gives up again. This is not the way of the Prophet Sallallahu The most beloved deeds to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala are the ones done in a consistent manner, even if it's little. So, uh, if it's one page a day, MashaAllah, as long as he's consistent. If he finds in himself more time, more energy to do it, then he should do more. But he would never go less than this, under any condition. Till he reaches a level where at least a juice is being recited, and then, you know, and, but with the consistency. Uh, so the Prophet ﷺ ordered for that rope to be undone and he said, You should pray, but when you're active, when you have the energy, if he's tired and so on, then let him sleep. So it shows how they were so determined in this and how the Prophet ﷺ would regulate this determination in them. Uh, also the Aisha uh, radiallahu anha, she said in this hadith in Surah Abu Dawood and it's a sound hadith, she said, uh, when Abdullah ibn Qais, he uh, came to her and he, uh, she told him, Ya Abdullah, la tada' qiyam al-layl. Do not leave the night prayer. فَإِنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ مَا كَانَ لَا Because the Prophet ﷺ would never leave it. See? Would never leave it. وَكَانَ إِذَا مَرِضَ أَوْ كَسُلْ If the Prophet ﷺ, when he was sick, or this word, if we say it, it's, which means, What's al kasal? Laziness, right? Which means if the Prophet would feel as a human being, right? He's not sick, but he is uh, tired or something that he doesn't feel like the salat. Salla wa qa'id. He would continue still to pray while he is sitting. So he would never leave it whatsoever, right? So even sometimes with the sunnah prayer, Right? Sometimes a person would not pray the sunnah prayer. Or like for example, now we didn't pray sunnah tarishan. Right? We should pray sunnah tarishan. And if it, like after the death is finished, I know some of the mashayikh, they do this. If the death is after Risha, they give the death. But then once the death is finished, the sheikh would stand up and make, pray the sunnah. Because many of us would go home and then forget. Right? And day after day, then there's no sunnah of Risha. Or if a person is determined and he go home and he do it, right? Sometimes you're so extremely tired. And because of this tiredness, you might leave even sunnah to Rishan. But if there's an option to make it sitting, then there's no excuse. But a person would say, sitting, that's, that's uh, it's laziness. Right? I should not do that. Then he ends up sleeping and not doing it. If it's leaving it altogether or praying sitting, of course pray sitting. And if the person will get half of the reward, but at least he did this action, like the 12 rak'ah of sunnah, Whoever prays him, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build the house in Jannah for that person. Right? So it happens whether a person prays standing or sitting. Of course, standing is more rewards, but not to leave it. The same thing with the night prayer and the Aisha saying, if, if he was sick, or does not feel like it, right? He would pray sitting, but he would never leave the night prayer whatsoever. The Prophet ﷺ would not do that every day, pray sitting. No, of course. But this is the exception, so that he does not leave the night prayer whatsoever. Uh, also, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she said, radiallahu anha, also, uh, when she was asked, هَلْ كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَجْهَى أَمْ يُسِرُ فِي الْكَيَمِ الْلَيْهِ Did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite loud or silently in the night prayer? She said, قَالَتْ كُلُّ ذَلِكَ فَعْلِ All of that he did. Sometimes he would recite loud, sometimes he would recite silently. So it depends on what? Depends on how you find yourself. Don't make it difficult for yourself. You find yourself, you feel like reciting it loud, go ahead. If you don't find, feel like this, 
you want to do it silently, go ahead. So all the means are made easy so that we don't miss Salatul Layl whatsoever. Because if we think that it has to be like in Ramadan or this or that, then uh, sometimes it becomes different. And this is all from the way of the Prophet. And there's an authentic hadith in Mustad al Hakim where the Prophet Marla ala Abi Bakr. Prophet passed by Abi Bakr. In which he was making the night prayer and his sound was low. And he passed by Umar and he was praying with a loud voice. فسأل أبي بكر فقال The Prophet asked Abu Bakr, right? So Abu Bakr told him, Ya Rasulullah, لقد أسمعت من نجيت Abu Bakr told him, or Messenger of Allah, whoever I'm making munaja, munaja is what secret uh, talk, right? meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he heard me, because he was saying it inside or with a lower voice. لقد أسمعت the Prophet ﷺ, he asked Abu Bakr, uh, why did you do that? So that Abu Bakr ﷺ, he said, Ya Rasulullah, لَقَدْ أَسْمَعْتُ مَنْ نَجَيْتُ يعني هو أسمع هو يعني مناجات الله عز وجل قد سمعها الله تبارك وتعالى فتأي فعل نفسي يعني So the Abu Bakr ﷺ, he said, O Messenger of Allah, I made, I, well, the way that I recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard it. When he asked Umar, Umar told him, لأطرد الشيطان وأوقد النائم which means to kick away the shaytan and to wake up the one that is asleep. Right? So the Prophet said to Abu Bakr, ارفع قليلا وقال عمر أخفض قليلا. Prophet said to Abu Bakr, you raise your voice a little bit and said to Umar, you lower your voice a little bit. So it's, the best is in between both. And Mu'atta Imam Malik, where Hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar that he said, كان عمر يصلي في الليل عمر يعني used to pray at night time حتى إذا كان آخر الليل أيقظ أهله whenever it's the last part of the night he would wake up his family and he would recite وأمر أهلك بالصلاة واستغفر عليها لا نسألك رزقا نحن نرزقه ولا عقبة بتقه and he would recite the ayah order your family to make salah and be patient with this we don't ask you for rizq, we would provide for you and the outcome is for the taqwa. So he would use the ayah, although some, of course the ayah means the obligatory salah, but also in the optional salah. The Prophet used to do the same thing to Aisha radiallahu anha. The last part of the night he would wake her up to pray the witr salah. Maybe the wife is tired, busy with the housework all day, so at least to have some share of this goodness, that before Fajr, she would wake up to pray to Raka'a or Wit and so on. Uh, and also in Sahih al Bukhari, when uh, a man he had Abu Hurairah as his guest for seven days. Uh, actually, the opposite. The man was a guest in the house of Abu Hurairah. This is after the Prophet. He said, فَكَانَ هُوَ وَزَوْجَتُهُ وَخَادِمُ يَقْتَسِمُونَ اللَّيْلَ ثَلَثَ he saw that Abu Hurairah and his wife and his servant, they would divide the night into three parts. In some narration, it's his daughter. So uh, the, he, uh, the, the wife, the first third, and then his servant, the second third, and Abu Hurairah would, recite, would pray the third part of the night. So the whole night, there is ibadah in the house. They're taking shifts, a turn in the salah. And... Um, the same thing as they say in the Dhabi, Rahimahullah, and Sulaiman al Taymi, can I end the Huzo Jatan? Can you yakt or can I yakt the Simon and Lady? Or can you yakt the Simon and Lay at Lather? Who were the Jatan? He's ready to do. So they would divide the night into three parts. Each one would pray one third. Also, Al-Hasan ibn Salih, who is a Muslim, was a man who was a man who was a man who was a man who was a man. Al-Hasan ibn Salih, one of the narrators of the hadith in Sahih Muslim, he used to divide the night, him and his brother and his mother, three parts. فماتت أمه, his mother died. 
فاقتسم الليل هو واخوه ذن هيم اند هيز براذر شيل ذا نايت هاف هاف اند هاف فمات اخوه فقام الليل بنفسه هيز براذر دايت سو هي توك كير اوف ذا هول نايت And there are, of course, there are many stories like this with the, from the early generations of Islam. Everybody used to make sure that there is salah at night. Right? They did not use, some of them did not use to see the, the houses, you know, uh, dark at night. They used to, the houses, this is the norm of the houses of the Muslims. It's busy with their bed. It doesn't mean that the one person is awake the whole night, but there is some form of a bed. And the night prayer doesn't have to be just the salah, but there is salah, there is recitation of the Quran. There is du'a and so on. And this is the means also to bring our means of, of blessings and barakah in our homes. And that's what uh, people should do and should help each other as the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, if a man prays at night and then he wakes his wife, and if she refuses, he sprinkles water on her, right? And if she wakes up at night and prays and then she wakes up her husband and if she, if he refuses, he, uh, she sprinkles water on his face and they pray, they will be, uh, the hadith is, Rahim Allahumma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah have mercy on a man that do this. May Allah have mercy on a woman that do this. So this is guaranteed that these people, if a person do this, he receives the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because whether it's a dua or a statement from the Prophet ﷺ, both the end result is the same. So this is a great virtue. Abu Sulaiman Darani, he said, Wallahi lawla qiyamu layl ma ahbabtu dun. He said, Wallahi, if it wasn't for the night prayer, I do not love this dunya. This is the thing that brings him joy in this life. And he says, Wallahi, in the ahl al layli fi laylihim, alaf min ahl al lahu fi lahu. He said, Wallahi, the people at night pray you make him a salah, they are more joyful than the people of forgetfulness and play because at night time also there is the night life. Right? There is the sinful life. So these people are enjoying themselves and subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. You would find the worst evil committed during the night and you would find the most virtuous things also for the believers they do that at night. And that's why the reward for the believers, nobody can comprehend this. So uh, and the believers when they're steadfast and they're patient with this, they enjoy their night, salah and ibadah more than these people when they enjoy it in matters of sin. Uh, that sometimes the heart would, uh, certain times will come uh, that a person would say the times of joy when a person feels the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on uh, that a person would say if this is how the people of Jannah would have this type of delight I'm in a great delight because of the feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would put in the hearts of the believers but again as we said before we should not judge our feelings it only works if a person is following the sunnah. If a person following the way the Prophet ﷺ, then the good feeling comes, then you know for sure that this is a good thing. But not to try something that is against the way the Prophet ﷺ, and it feels good. It's not an evidence that it's a good thing. It might be an evil thing. Because those people are committing sins, they also feel good. And they take an evidence that since they're feeling good, that means what they're doing is a good thing. For us, no, it's the way the Prophet ﷺ, person is patiently doing it, then if it feels good, mashallah, this is a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a good thing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What if it doesn't feel good? Doesn't it? It's not something that the believers seek. This is something that can be given to some and not given to others, which is fine. Because we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not based on what we want, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Not for our own satisfaction in this life. You seek rewards in the hereafter. Satisfaction in this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Yes, He brings it to the believers, but it's not something that a believer would have it as a condition in his life. Uh, there are many things, but just one thing, and we end with it, inshallah ta'ala. Ayah ibn Amr al Qaysin, probably heard this before, also, he's from the Tabi'een. He, he married a woman, uh, and her name was Zu'aba. When the night time came, when he married her, he wanted to test, it, test her. So she got up during the day, Ta'jin, Ajina, the woman, they used to make their paste. Right? So she's making her paste with the flour and so on, that she would get the bread already made from the store. Uh, so he said, 
should I bring for you a servant to take care of this? She said, I married Rayah, a simple man, his name, and I didn't marry a tyrant. You know, I don't, I don't need a servant. So when the night came, he made himself sleep. He's one that is in you know, matters of worship and so on. But he pretended to sleep. He wants to test his new wife if she's righteous or not. So she uh, stood up in salah and worship for one-fourth of the night. So she told him, Ya Rayah, come, get up. So he said, I will, inshallah. And then he continued to sleep. So she stood up the second, uh, fourth, and she said after that, Ya Rayah, come, get up. He said, I will, inshallah. And then he continued to sleep. So the third, fourth of uh, the night like this, and she told him the same thing. Then the, the last fourth of the night, she told him that يَا رَيَاحْ قَدْ عَسْكَ الْمُعَسْكِهُونَ وَفَازَ الْمُحْسِنُونَ The campers, they have already camped and the muhsinun they had won, right? That means they have already done. Those who have been worshipping the night, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the night, they have surpassed you, right? And you're still asleep. And she said, يَا رَيْتَ شَعْرِ مَنْ غَضَّنِي بِكْ Right? يَا رَيْتَ شَعْرِ is a statement is to be said when a person uh, wishes something that might not happen. Right, so she said, who deceived me to marry you, right? And uh, so this is how they used to compete with one another, right? And there are many examples of this, of course. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised these people. Again, the, the point with what we said in the beginning, so that we don't uh, abuse the matter and then a person leaves their worship altogether. So starting with something simple, having a share of the night, even if it's a short period of time, but as long as we have salah after Isha, from Isha to Fajr, uh, and following the way the Prophet ﷺ, definitely this is what is uh, meant. And making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because we said, sins prevent the person from these things, forgetfulness, diseases in the heart. So making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a lot of repentance and seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.